Welcome back to another episode from Carp's Eye Mark 1-0. You join us on a session we fished back in December at one of Embryo Angling's venues, Little Broom, a lake they like to call the Lads and Dads Lake. Little Broom sits next to Embryo's Big Lake Syndicate water in Bedfordshire, but before we could fish, we had to make the journey from the Midlands, making that all-important pit stop along the way. Two big ties to your bike and meals, large. Yeah, the Coke. Large too. Uh, can I can have a large eye with one and a coke with the other. Yeah. Uh, can I have some of them cheese mouth dippers? Yeah, I'll have some. Yeah. Two of them, please. Yeah. And. Uh, can I have five selects as well, please? Yeah. How many selects would you like to do a five? Uh, five. Uh, ketchup, please. What sauce you want? Yeah, that's it, Tar. Why thank you, kind sir. As always, and especially when fishing a new venue for the first time, we always take the time to walk around and have a good look at the lake. As we walk around, we're looking for any obvious signs of carp, such as fish crashing, fins breaking the water surface, or fizzing from feeding fish, as well as checking for any likely areas where carp may be holding up. There's nothing worse than getting set up in a swim, or the closest swim possible, to then start seeing fish show in a different area of the lake. Having had a good look around and deciding our swims, it was time to get the tackle out of the van and get set up. Easy Jelly, what tackle are you talking about? <laughs> it's a pants party. <laughs> new bomb this, is, this is the new Fox model. Modelling his new fox wear. Fox che better. Check out the beanie. <laughs> <laughs> and the chalices. Uh, with zips. With zips. Bear that in mind. All you other uh, people who make shit but don't have zips. We want zips. We want put zip pockets. I'll take it to Parliament. With the van unloaded, I set about flicking the marker float around the swim, casting to the far side of the lake and dragging the lead back, looking for where the marginal shelf drops into the deeper water. Okay. 
With my spots found, it's time to get some rigs out and see what the night brings. I feel like it's not just a bit too far to stretch. Like I could end up in the drinks. Life is really short, mate. Literally, short people problems. You better learn to swim. As the early December evening started to draw in, the Apache came to give fire support while we finished setting up. Well, jelly at least. Me, on the other hand, I've been busy filming round on his peg and I still needed to get my rods out. I had a quick let around my swim with the marker float to find out some depths and see what the lake bed was like in front of me and got the rods clipped up using the marker sticks. However, by 4pm the early December sun had set and I was left casting PVA bags into the dark. This is getting hard to see the end of the line. You just see it. Oh, who's your baby? With the rods set, I settled down for the night and waited for the action. Come on now, Baldwin. We both know it didn't go that smoothly. What are you done, mate? Oh, we didn't get them. Oh, what are you done? Putting up the uh, <laughs> Christmas decoration. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that what you do? Putting I see. The Christmas tree. I like it, very thoughtful. Morning came with nothing more than a couple of weird liners. First on my right hand rod, then again the same thing on the left hand rod around 20 minutes later. I woke up with the sunrise as I always try to do when fishing, just to watch the lake as the day breaks. It's something that I really enjoy about my time on the bank, waking up in nature with the wildlife and the elements. This can also be a great time to spot signs of carp. I decided to pop round to Jelly's Peg to get some morning footage and well, just see if he'd had any more action than I'd had during the night. But it would appear not. <clears throat> Time to bug out, I best leave Sleeping Beauty to it. As the sun continued to rise, I potted around watching the lake and carrying out a few morning duties of my own. On the way back to my swim, I decided to drop back in on Jelly to see if he was lively yet. Yep, that's what I thought. I gave him another half an hour and then I checked in on him again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Right, it's enough of that nonsense. Time to give Jelly a wake up call. You dickhead. I've already had fucking one last fish. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You last one. You know what's mad? You picked the same rod. <clears throat> love it. Yeah, weird, mate. Have you played it? What? Uh -huh. Have you played it? Screamed off, man. I hear since nothing. We had a brew and discussed the strange liners that we had both experienced throughout the night. Then all of a sudden, Jelly was into a fish. Or so he thought. Alright, look, it's fine, that's that. Right, it's there, look. It's on that other line, though, isn't it? Well, that fucking other line's tethered on that fucking air writer, isn't it? Is it? That is an air writer, isn't it? I think it's an air writer. I don't know what it is. Unless it's a pellet feeder. Oh, I bet that's what it is. We need a boat, mate. With the fish appearing to be tethered to another line, I put the rod down on the rest and we contacted the bailiff to assist us in freeing the tethered fish. I decided to pull my rods out to avoid any further carnage and I used the time while there was a lull in the fishing to apply a small amount of bait to one of the spots I had previously found. Just putting six small spawns over two rods. And here we see the great non-eaten man. As we watch from afar, he baits for fish. Beautifully executed. And then, and only then, may the non-eaten male capture the fish. The bailiff arrived shortly after and was able to get to work freeing the tethered fish. But well, managed to have one. Unfortunately, it was on someone else's line, tethered. But at least we got that back. That's a good thing. And to add insult to injury, that's small she is. <laughs> but she don't count. But at least we got the rig out and we got to treat her. That's the start. With time pushing on and the tethered fish treated and put back safely, and hopefully the cause of the mysterious line is resolved, it was time to get back to fishing. So we got straight to getting the rods back out on the boated area. And the same on my side, 
I quickly got the rods back out on the spots and just put a few free offerings over each rod with a throwing stick. The morning brought still calmness to the lake and another night of no action in my swim. Luckily, I was woken by jelly with a brew and tales of fish in the night. Height difference between them? Yeah. Oh, he's in. And while we were chatting, he was in again. Go on then, lad. Got it? No mess if you want. I don't know. It makes no difference to me. This is off the 18 mil whack for this. Is it? And a bigger hook as well. Size five. Yeah. Oh, welcome, lad. He'll take another one. You know, the session that changed, eh? That's two man. You said you'd get the one and then that'd be it. <laughs> oh, mate, man, I told you. Once you break that spell, mate. Yeah. Was it? With the fish safely in the net, I got the rod straight back out on the spot and a few more free offerings over the top to try and maximise the chance of another bite for many fish that might still be feeding in the area. Now let's take a look at those fish. Calm down guys! It'll all be okay. Go ahead Sid! Go ahead Sid! <laughs> But I made a change of tactics after seeing the size of the mouth and the size of the fish that I had yesterday on the other line. So I've decided to go with single piece of pop up corn in a PVA bag. I've had three fish, they're only small but more than welcome when it's cold like this. Better than a blanca. So this is another one that come off the corn. Once again only small but I'll take it. I 
off that. So this is the last of the three fish. I'm happy with this one because they said that there's a you'll have a lot more commons, you'll be lucky to have a mirror, so I'll take that. Show you the other side as well. This one's quite nice looking. That's the other side. Nice looking fish, be lovely when it's bigger to be honest. Come on there little man. Off your pop. Swim up mate. Up up and away. What's that Jelly? Happy days. No more blankage. Although these might only be small carp, it's always nice to get a winter bite, and to be honest, we wasn't that bothered about the size. These were the first fish for the Mike One Zero camera, and we were absolutely buzzing. As we headed into the final afternoon, we had a good chat and a catch up while watching the red carts and planes fly overhead. Then we remembered, we had a celebration to get to. Happy birthday, Bainesy boy. Happy birthday, Bains. So as you noticed, Bains wasn't with us on today's session. Uh, it's his birthday weekend, so unfortunately he couldn't join us. Uh, having time with the wife and family, as it is. Excuses. Excuses. We saved you a spot anyway, lad. Missed your own party, as you can see. Now Jelly's going to have to eat all this cake to himself. Which you know I don't mind. No, but in all serious though, Bains, happy birthday, mate. It's not the same without you, but we do understand. Hope you enjoy your birthday weekend with your family, mate. Yeah, enough love, Bouncy boy. Big love. Happy birthday, brother. Happy birthday, mate. <laughs> and it blew the candle out. <laughs> As the session started drawing to a close, and between being busy with filming, tethered fish, and my swim being a bit quiet, I was still to get a bite. I headed round to a quiet corner at the opposite end of the lake to try and stalk one out and left Jelly to enjoy the party. Eventually I was able to nick a bite from the other end of the lake but due to technical issues with the GoPro or user error I missed all the action. Let's take a look at that fish. So we have him. First session. session. An only fish from this session for me in the closing hours. 
Probably the smallest calf I've ever had. But still, saving from a blank, so happy days. We're getting back. It's time to get packed up and get home. As I look back at our session at Embryo's Little Brew, it had its eventful times. But it was great that we both got to nick a winter bite and we both got our first fish for the Carp Sign White One Zero cameras. But what's more important to me is that I got to spend a weekend out in nature with one of my oldest and best friends. We've joked around, had a good laugh and a catch up, and that's what makes these sessions that little bit more special for me. But our time at Little Broom had come to an end, and it was time to get all the tackle packed up and get back to the Midlands. If you enjoyed this episode, please help us out and subscribe. And until next time, it's Mark One Zero out.